okay, okay, just understand. Why I asked to yell? <laughs> no, yelling is our last, last act of communication. When we reach a prime stage of frustration, that's where we yell. You understand yelling? Yelling is humans' last act of frustration, and it is based on quarter insanity where you do not know what to say. So when you do not know what to say, or you feel you are not reaching somebody, you start yelling. Yelling also, in psychology, came at a, as a therapy. What they decided, that they made the room with the absolute padding. They give you tissues, that's the only one thing. And they secure the room that you cannot hang yourself, you cannot do anything. And they put you in that room with barest minimum clothes. So you cannot tie it around your throat, you cannot kill yourself and they leave you there for night. It's called primal therapy. Person yells, screams, cries, does whatever. Nobody hears him outside, but inside he knows he's hearing self. And whatever he says is exposed to vibration. And they found out in psychology that well, that's also a way to let your inner things go. Then somebody was very clever. He came to my class once and I was teaching rebirthing and how to go from a primal pain of the childhood from the pregnancy to life. They made up a rebirthing course, cost about seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars and uh, they start doing that. Then somebody took little Kundalini Yoga, little uh, Zenism and this and that, and they make it est. Finally, you might have understood there is a very costly religious thing going on, Scientology. Scientology is nothing based on an E-meter. They put you front to front, and they put this e-meter in between you. E-meter is nothing but a, what you call that, uh, we use it, uh, light, light detector, the test. So they ask you a question, you answer. The e-meter said you are lying. Then he asks you another question. And so one man to one man basis they work. And finally you reach a state that you have stopped lying. They think, they call it cleansing. By the time you are cleansed of that lying, you also cleanse of about 7,000 bucks. <laughs> so there are so many things in life going on in one thing or the other. Process is not what is what. Process is what your mind does to you. Mind was given to you to serve. And mind was given the strength to compute and communicate. That you do mentally. Mind has 81 portions, and mind has three minds, negative, positive, and neutral. That's how you freak out in your life. Hey, you think I'm blind? 
I know you don't want to learn it. But I'm not going to leave behind when I die a lot of money that you can goof around and take care of. You better learn life. I know you are my granddaughter and you are right over me, but I'm very kind to you, you know that? And you are very spoiled that I'm very rich. Somehow I'll take care of you anyway. So why can't you just act right and I'll take care of you anyway, anyway? Huh? Right? Pay attention. You will learn this, it will be useful to you. Okay, that's the agreement? Nice. What happens is very simple. You have ears. Say, ears. Ears. <coughs> then you have an inner ear. Inner ear. You know that? Have you heard that before? No? No, no, that's very important, you should know. You have an ear, then you have an inner ear. Inner ears have three bones. Inner ear? Has three bones. There are two sides bone which are called signal bones and there's one hammer bone. So whatever you hear here, it goes to the inner ear, and inner ear, the hammer bone, strikes on the two side bones, right? And that sends this electronic signal into the brain. And brain computes it, and it gives it to your understanding. And that understanding can go to three things. It go first to your, can go to three things. But it goes to first thing is called negative mind. So that is the right of life. When you hear something, immediately the reaction is, what is in it? Why saying me this thing? Why I'm hearing it? What it means? Why is saying it? What is under it? Every facet of negativity will come up. Then normally, the same thing will go to the positive mind. Positive mind is a section. And positive mind, instead of telling you what is positive in it, pull down from your memory, which is the neighbor, all the previous negative records. And so it happened to you then, it happened to you then, it happened to you then, it can happen to you. It reinforces the negative mind. Whereas, you should be trained in your life from negative mind to positive mind and to understand and hear in your own head this is negative of it and this is positive of it. So, did you still have Dr. Yeah. Because it's 3.40. Well, call him, ask him, I finish the class, I'll tell him and okay. check where he will be available because I have to speak to him. Okay. All right, done. Now, Positive mind and negative mind are used by everybody that way. That's why our life is mess, because we don't hear right. Then the third position is that you have to go to a negative mind. Again, is that true what the positive mind is saying? The guy has said first, he's going to say, yeah, 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 and you are said. When there is a too much negativity in life, then projection becomes hopeless, and that is the beginning of a permanent depression. And once in a permanent depression, it, it starts as polite depression, slight depression, regular depression, real depression, 
Then it become fear, it become phobia, and then it become neurosis, and then neurotic, and psychotic, and on and on. But it starts right there. Now, actually, from negative mind you should go to positive mind, from a positive mind you should go to shunya, partahar, zero, neutral mind. And then you idle there. You know car idles? When you put it in the park, it runs, neither it move forward, nor it move. Then you should idle there. And if you care to idle there, then you will find neutrally what is in your best interest. What is? And that should be the answer to your life. What is best for you can only come to you from your neutral mind. In our Sikh way of life, we call it Sahaj Avastha a neutral, normal status of state. When you think of that, that you are in a neutral state, then you can totally compute pros and... Once you compute the pros and cons, you are in the net neutral stage, you always will find out what to do. Then again, from neutral mind you reverse back to positive mind and you achieve it. That is how success comes to us. But if you ever want that you should not have negative mind, <clears throat> it will be wrong because then you will be insane. Nature has provided that procedure. Similarly, when you speak, okay, there are two ways of speaking. One is you speak with the power of your lips and tongue. Power of? Second procedure is you only speak with the power of tongue. Third is you speak through the sign language. Now, let us learn first process. I, 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 I love, love you. you. Now say it with the lips. I, I love, 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 love you. you. It will have no taste. Speak it and listen to it again. Go ahead. <laughs> I love you. Understand? Now speak with tongue. I, I, no, no, watch, 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 watch. Listen, listen, don't hurry up. I love you. There's so much taste in it. There's so much sex in it. You understand? It goes right into the head. Words are the same. And third, <laughs> then you are not a say word. So speak, I, I love you. That is with lips and tongue, right? Then second procedure is only with tongue. I love you. There is so much juice in it. And third, 
you got to kids learn that because your first power is your presence write it down your first language is your presence your first language is your presence your second language is your body language Second language is your body language. Your third language is your spoken word. Your third language is your spoken word. Your fourth language is the clarity, 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 clarity in your spoken words. Your fourth language is your clarity, 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 clarity in your spoken words. And your fifth language is your commitment in your words. Can you repeat it, please? Your commitment conveys in your words. Now, have you ever planned to speak that way? Hello? Have you ever planned to speak that way? No. Why not? No. Why not? No. Well, I was here for the last 20 years. <laughs> How many of... <laughs> How many of you under 20? <laughs> yeah, okay. You are all exempt. But how about, how are you over 10 year old? So what you were, what you were doing from last 10 years? Well, you could learn this, you were all summer here. What are you trying to lay on India, huh? These are the five speaking languages you can speak in. Then there are thousands of different languages. But you must understand, there are these situations. Either when you speak, you use the method called uttering. Are you utter and mostly you tutter? You don't make any sense. Then you speak. Speak? Are you speak loudly? Are you a loud speaker? Are you a speaker? It has no juice in it. Then third status you can have in your personality, you can be a speaker and communicator. So when you communicate, you make a statement. And when you make a statement, you always be called upon your statement to prove it. Got it? Understand? Yes. Lastly, what you can speak is you can create an intercourse. Intercourse is between two people who speak and it is called dialogue. Doya? Where both parties paid equally and that creates understanding. So which one, which area you want to adapt? Come on. Dialogue. The intercourse word which you use for sex was never meant for sex. Oh, we had a great intercourse. That means we talked with great understanding. We had a great dialogue and we came to understanding. And we'll call it, we had a great intercourse. But now you know everything. If you call anybody gay, that means different than it used to be. So things change with circumstances. So learn to create dialogue. 
what steps you use in creating a dialogue. First do the homework to clear your mind and know exactly what you are talking about. That you should know yourself. And then you make a person understand why you are talking and what you are talking. And thirdly, bring to the personality of the person the understanding why it is best for that person and also why it is best for you. You understand? Now repeat. Number one, you must have homework, clear understanding, right? Correct? The second? You have to be clear with that person why you are speaking, right? Third, what is it best for that person in that? and what is best for you. If you tell everybody it is best for you and don't tell what is best for you, you are hiding something. You won't be trusted. Always create a dialogue to create a trust. Don't create impression. Don't create to convince. Don't create to get by. Always communicate to trust. Create a trust. That's the power of the spoken word. And these are the principles you must remember in communication. First poke, second provoke, third confront, and fourth, elevate. If you leave a dialogue without elevating another person, you have missed the person forever. You have done injury instead of any healing. All right? So far, I have given you few fundamentals of communication. Now, it is personality to reality, reality to non-reality. That's why we talk. Sometimes we want to speak to create a reality. Sometimes we want to speak to hide our reality and create non-reality. You understand? And sometimes you have nothing to say. And sometimes <clears throat> you say it all. So please ask me the question so I can give you a few examples so that you can understand. Any subject you can choose, any question you can ask. Hurry up. One hour speaking takes your energy of breakfast and a lunch. That has your energy it cost. And you speak too much, you eat too much, you mess up your body. So therefore, when you normally speak, understand what for. Did you get that paper on mind done? Oh, come on, bring it type so we can give to these people. Hurry up, cover me. Why oh, I have to read, I have to have in a board letters. That note. No, no, just uh, bring that paper to me. Have you discussed with Sri Ram? Yeah, mind I gave you last night. Yeah, that paper. Hurry up. Spoiled. Hurry up! <laughs> okay. 
When you speak, speak with a purpose. Go ahead. Speak with a purpose. And speak with a clear projection. Speak with a And speak when you have to speak must. Is that understood? All right, what are the question? Why you speak? Well, mostly you speak to express yourself and not feel lonely. Yes. Majority of the time you speak not to feel lonely. And some people got to speak with trees. Some people speak with birds. Some people will speak with animals. I have a friend, he can speak to any bird and any animal and uh, he once took me in New York, up north, in the state, and he went into this jungle. You know, it was a kind of a forest type of thing. And he said, I don't know what he did. So, 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 so something like that, and two, three, four birds flew in on the hand. And then he told one bird, oh, so, 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 and he came on my shoulder. <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, <laughs> how you can do it? And he said, uh, I speak their language. They are my friends. I thought they were his pet birds. <coughs> then I told him, I said, well, do you see that eagle? They're kind of, he said, no, it's not eagle. It is, uh, it is a prey bird, but it, he named something. And I said, can you call that one? So he did a kind of a cry. And in few minutes, that bird flew up and and he laid the hand and he stole. And the most amazing part was he has no hand cover of leather or anything. And the bird did not put his claws, those big nails, on his hand. He was not injured. Amazed me. Okay, next question. Oh, thanks a lot. Yes, well, I have prepared this for you. It is our mind, 81 facets, how to conquer for peace within ourselves and our planet. It's a little thing by me, done by our mother. I'll share that with you in a minute. But let us start the questions which you want to know. Go ahead. Yes. Well, the first thing is that if you want to be very heavy and not obnoxious, use silence. Silence is a weapon which will never miss the goal. In the middle of conversation, just go silent. And the person say, what? Say, I have nothing more to say. That is a killer. That can bring a lot of anger. That can bring a lot of violence sometimes. But it's a weapon which you will never miss. But if you want to not be mean, just say very politely, may I say something? <coughs> I'm not interested in this. Create a mystery and get to silence and you got it all. You don't have to be mean, abusive. You have to mean and abusive only where your interest lies to chipping somebody and 
crazy creating some thady you you have to do it and person is not taking the frequency and you have to do it and is all pressure tactics which normally it is very divine in humanity but your interest has to be totally 200% and that is what parents do they yell and scream and do whole thing to tell their children what is right and wrong because they have never learned dialogue they feel authority they are the final authority it is the subject and the object and that's why they take the subject and they tell the object what to do they can't create a dialogue why they don't have time no parents have ever found time for their children and in our society today is impossible there was a time when parents mother was always at home father was always at work now both are at work and now today mothers are modern mothers they have no time for children but they have all the time for shopping they have time for many other things they have no time for children and this is a modern society you can't help it next yeah through a discussion there goes a debate and it's the most painful effort parents must undertake listen to both let them debate it and you have to referee it it a question of complaint must be decided by both and you can only empire it you can referee it and they will all end up in conversation of understanding but don't ever enforce the decision they will not come next time because it is not they are coming to parents for judgment they will go to the court for judgment they will go everything every person grown up will like to be having a judgment on a situation so parents have to do that at that time you can order around you can't tell one shut up the other get out here normally parents say time out put in a room that's totally ridiculous insulting that's not the way to do it you can't tell your own born you have no time to listen and no time to do justice moment as parents you do that you have committed the biggest felony on the planet earth next your biggest power is meditation if you are clear mind you are intuitive moment you are intuitive you know the truth you can speak it there's nothing wrong in it it is not you are vouching or your ego is vouching it is what true is if you know tomorrow what is happening if you love somebody just say it let them not believe it who cares they won't believe you once they don't want it twice they won't it 10 times well after the time they will believe you they believe you by experience they trust you by hard hard luck 
Nobody trusts anybody. Nobody believes anybody. People don't trust any other person. It's the wisdom which people want to trust, not the person. That's another problem in life. Nobody wants to trust you ever. Nobody loves you ever. Nobody knows you ever. It's the amount of wisdom you can shell out. The kona, everybody simple, it's one of the simplest things. Gala, gala, wal, hal, chal. These are four things. Gal means communication, talk. Wal means the procedure, the technique. Hal means through which you can solve somebody's problem. And chal is you create a drama to cheat somebody. Three are okay, fourth you use, nobody will trust you ever. Simple. <coughs> yeah, Unkar, what is it? Um, if two people are on total opposite sides... Of opposite polarities. Opposite polarities. Sides are very difficult to judge, polarities are always there. They have different interests. They are on different polarities. Different frequencies. Very simple, make temporary truce. Become permanent? No. Huh? Pardon? No, 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 no. When you cannot deal with the thing right on, create a temporary truce. That means the other person knows that you are not sure, you know you are not sure. And that's very honest. Yeah, go ahead, ask the question. You are not clear on your question, isn't it? Huh? Your father is totally negative to me and I am very positive to him, I don't care. Yeah, but you understand, my, my solution to everything is, I have to be super positive, doesn't matter what. So the question is, when I come to their level, then there's a fight. I'll never come to their level. Your father was talking so negative, the whole community end up in arms. All I did is call him and put him on 40 days silence. I told him 40 days you will speak nothing but positive. He agreed, matter ended. And he did it too. Those 40 days he never spoke negative once. I checked through everybody. No fight. He cannot help but being negative. That is his hello. He is miserable himself. It's not that he is happy about it. Your mother? Your mother knows it that there are children involved and she is now first mother and woman next. Therefore, She'll come through, doesn't matter what. It's a sad story, but it has a wonderful result. I'm yet to see a woman who can be that positive. 
with that negativity and still smile. She is one example in all three of you we should be proud of. You don't like it, <laughs> I know. I don't like it either. No, he's not bad. He's absolutely not bad. He's negative. Negative is not always bad. Why you call him bad? Bad is too much. Negative. He's not bad. He is Mr. Negative. He starts with everything negative. And then you discuss positive within three hours. In the end, he'll find out negative in your positive. Very good. Why not? That's his speciality. In an army strategy, that man will be paid highest. No, because he wouldn't listen to anybody who told him to do it. Huh? No, no, no. In army, we apply, employ some people at a very high salary. Their job is we give anything to them. They totally get to the negative of it. It's not a wrong idea. He has a very natural intuition. But sometimes the negative intuition is based on his fears and other stuff, and that messes up the thing. Otherwise, he's a nice guy. He's not wrong. He's negative. I like him. That's why I never bother. You have to have a very special technique to like such a man. He's very kind-hearted. He's very generous. And with all the great qualities, he's Mr. Negative. And it should not bug anybody. But people don't like it. I don't know why. Why people don't like it? Huh? Well, why don't you tell him, Papa, stop it? No, no, say it with love and affection, not the way you say it to him, I know. Future possibilities are. Past, future, present. No, 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 no. He has the right to tell the past. He has the privilege to tell the positive now. And he has to bring hope for tomorrow. And that's the way to communicate. You always bring the facts to somebody's attention. You always deal with the now. And you must elevate the person for tomorrow. Next. Yeah. How do you help somebody who doesn't want to help themselves? Oh, what a question. Have you heard the question? How you want to help somebody who doesn't want to help himself? Tell me. There's not a one person living who wants to help himself. None including me. Nobody wants to help themselves. How many of you, I ask you a question, how many of you get up in the morning, stand before a mirror and appreciate yourself? Get out of this sun. This is a direct angle sun. It is going to burn your skin. This is New Mexico sun. Come this way, please. <laughs> Ram? Oh, he does everything to survive. Oh, definitely without that he can't make a day. <laughs> Remember, one day he was a fanatic Sikh. He learned everything. Now he practices it, but he's mad with us. It's okay. He'll come home sooner or later.
is not going anywhere. We'll watch every summer. <laughs> the day was good with you? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, go ahead. Nobody wants to help him and herself. <coughs> Tell me why. Hmm? Because they think they are perfect themselves already. That's true. Correct answer. Because in our life, helping means something is crippled, something is wrong, something is not right. Actually, Helping yourself means your homework. And homework about your living, your life, your being. You need yourself and you need to help it. You need to maintain it. You need some hours to think about yourself, be yourself, Work out your day, work out your life, work out your plan, work out your belief. You need all that. And if you don't do that, you shall be confused. Is that understood? That's why we are always in tension. That's why we are always in pain. That's why we are in trouble. We don't have time for ourselves. We have time for everything. So what can you do to... Um... Simple thing, sadhana. Get up in the morning, be yourself, do your exercises, meditate, clean your mind. Breathe, open your lungs, etc., etc., etc. One tenth of the day is two and a half hour of the 24 hours. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. You must spend two and a half hour every day on yourself on your exercise, on your meditation, on your purity. You understand what we are doing. We ask ourselves four things. Bana, Bani, Seva, Simran. When I use the word Bani, you think Gurbani. But that's not true. Bani is, Bana does one thing for you. You declare your identity. It's not that you don't have identity. Normally, as a human being, you'll hide your identity. Everybody does it. And everybody wants to do it. And everybody wants to live like a commoner and look like a commoner and be like a commoner. Because that is called fishing. You want to be in the crowd, but when you see the thing, you want to grab it. That's your hunter policy. That's your mentality. To conquer that mentality, you come out in Bana. You declare your identity. That's why a policeman has to wear it. By appearance, look, and discipline, you can find out a policeman. Then he has to carry his name. Then he carries his tab, his rank. And over and above that, he carries the identity card. So he has to declare himself. Bani, what you speak, doesn't matter who you are, it will take three minutes to figure you out. Two things. Either you are a flirt or you are alert. If you are alert, price will go sky high. If you are flirt, They'll bargain cheap. Seva means 
coming out and serving and helping and pulling people out of troubles and etc etc that will give you perpetual friendship a territory forever simran is your self cleansing your mind cleaning your inner strength it is the strength of your soul nothing more nothing less you can have it all and you may have none is your choice when guru gobind singh laid down this rule at that time this was the condition of india any man can be picked up and butchered to get his blood to feed the hunter hunting animals of the king any man if a person doesn't come out he's gone everybody knew it it was a rule nobody can sit higher than 2 and 1/2 foot if he does he must be beheaded <clears throat> every girl who's 16 and above must be presented to the local chief for a night to sleep with that's why in india the custom they started marrying everybody 6 7 year old no no that's true is true if a soldier spits and a man is around he must receive it on the hand if he misses it soldier has the right to behead him these were the rule when guru gobind singh took over he was 9 year old when i was 42 the mughal empire trembled to his last so these are few facts of life i wanted to tell you and he brought those people into life who never had a dream even to rise above ground next you don't ask lot of questions now why you don't want the answers how can you make a relationship work when everything has gone wrong from the beginning if a relationship goes wrong in the very beginning you can start beginning any time you want there's no beginning no end if you want it question is you want or you don't all beginnings are with you and all ends are with you and all middle is with you there's no beginning without you there's no middle without you and there's no end without you <clears throat> there's nothing more important than you please value yourself if you do not value yourself nobody shall value you if you sell cheap you land up as a creep there's no way out it is that cut and dry next yeah how you get you want <clears throat> is the simplest thing <clears throat> if you are willing to put your 100% into it and you are willing to fail all the sacrifices for it you will get it is a matter of time i always get over it always do
That's why always people leave me, I never leave them. Because I want one thing, the best of everybody. They got so scared, he want my best. What about him? I don't care. I am the best. Why should I care? See, I get everything what I want on time. Right, folks? Next. Hey, you littles, you have to face life. Talk to me. If you keep this damn question to yourself, you're not going to find the answers and you're going to suffer. At least you can hear my version. You don't have to believe it. The question they asked this morning, they didn't like my answer, was why do you even need to get married? Biological need, time clicking, destiny, passions, need of somebody to sleep with, better than a pillow, safe sex, safe sex, what else, security, why do you need money? Why? Security only isn't money. No familiar kisses, things to brag about, things to yell at, things to give bad time, get angry with somebody free of cost. Why do I have to cook for my husband? Why shouldn't he cook for me? Because he has to cook you every night. It's better you feed him during the day. <laughs> that is, in olden days, that was the time. But now is modern time. Both go to a restaurant with their different friends. Either they get rain checks from each other, or they get a, what they got Dutch treat. Dutch treat. World is changing. Ah. Yeah. Kids are the most innocent angels in life and they are real joy. Time is always there if you want it. Problem what happens with parents is, they got the kids, everything was right to begin with, then they now got them. And they think kids are their furniture. They are like a slaves. He has kids. Have you two kids? Ask him how much trouble he is in. Why? Ask him why. I'm not in any trouble. I don't know why he pointed me out. I'm, I've been blessed. I, I've got wonderful kids. So you have the perfect children? Huh? No, I, 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 <laughs> I got the perfect teacher who so raised him. No, I got the perfect teacher who raised him. I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> His children are so independent. Once that little thing say, Papa, what did she say to you? Oh, she can say anything. <laughs> now go ahead, tell them. Oh, which, oh, which time? When she figured it out, I'm your boss. Oh, yeah, she said... She said to me when she was about three years old, she said, Papa, I said, what, dear? She said, is the Suri Singh Saab your boss? Could I do? I said, yes, dear, she is. We've never had the same relationship since. She doesn't think I'm the final word, so whatever I go is open, say is open to negotiation. So she has no fear of me. What a wonderful way for a kid to be raised without fear of their parents. He says, time out. She says, your time out. <laughs> She's so fast, you can't believe that little kid. 
she comes to me and Dhari Amra tells me, well, she's very hyper, she's not behaving all right. She said, no. Let Siri Singh Sahib be the judge. I behave all right. <laughs> no problem. And she said, you didn't behave with me. She said, that's outside here. We'll discuss it later. This, 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 she's this much. But we taught those children as experiment that they have to be free, they have to be themselves. In that house lives Auntie Ji, Kal Guru Amrit. She is six foot two and she is a living logic. And once in a while I visit it too. I am the appellate authority. So if there are any complaints, they come duly and justice has to be done. So both parents are aware of the fact. So there's never a trouble. It's a very beautifully lived house. But they also know they can't freak out from school. <clears throat> they got to do their work right. They have to behave well, then they have to. The rest of the time, they also know if they want to freak out, they have the privilege. If you allow your children not to mix their right and privileges, then you are in good shape. Children have certain rights, they should be theirs, and they have some privileges. Those should be decided on the merits only. That's all. <coughs> but we start doing, we start punishing children, and they become hardcore, and then one thing leads to the other. Mostly we teach our children to lie, we teach them to sneak, we teach them to do things which are not very real because we don't educate our children properly. It's a lack of proper attention. And then parents just give up. Oh, no, I didn't have a time. I can do it. I'm working hard. Oh, look at me. I'm your mother. I'm miserable. Well, you are miserable when you are in labor pains, too. <clears throat> the worst experience which I have in America is when the parents are not willing to sacrifice for the poor, innocent children. They want what they need. I want A grades. The guy doesn't know what to do about it, and they're not willing to help. They can't sit down and do their homework. They can't help them. All they want is grades. That damn paper makes them happy and unhappy. Where they were the whole year? Doing parties? That's the most tragic part of it. It's a very damn continuous process. And the tragedy of it is when you threat your child, you damage the personality. You are the basic God-given damn security and you start threatening your child where the child has to go. Which way? There's no place. Yeah. If someone tells you to do something, huh? If someone were to tell you to do something, someone told you to do something, and you didn't want to do it, how can you get out of it that way? No, it's very simple. It's explained. I tell you, it's so simple. A lot of people tell me what to do. 
you know how many many people regularly on daily basis tell me to do my 11 sectaries my original teachers name a thing everybody has the right to tell me what to do normally what i do is put the facts before them and ask their opinion they back off Make up a fake example and I'll give you the example how to communicate. Yeah, I tell everybody to get married. When I find something good, they tell me not to, I don't care. So how is it how to bring it up? <laughs> get on with what? All they have to just tell me, I don't want it. I also find some jewelry piece and give it to people. All they have to tell me, I don't want to wear it. Fine. It, between that and that, there's no difference. I don't expect 100% obedience. I don't care a damn. I'm just interested in the kids. If there is an opportunity, I'll take care of it. Siri Simran Jr. never wanted to get married. She's my ward legally, and my estate could have taken care of her, but she was not in a position to take care of by that estate, and I honestly got to above, do not trust anybody. I wanted to create that relationship, and look at that. After hospital, I moved in her house. What more do you expect from me? I live in that house. Just to, any time she asks a question, I'm there. What more I can do? I took a responsibility. Whether I was fool or wise, I don't care. At that time, there was a need of security for that girl. And I raised her. I changed her diapers. I understand her, right? I could not betray her. She's a part of my will, she's a part of my estate, and she will never need anybody. But still I know this world is normal, and she still wants to live a normal life, and she was too innocent. And I ask for my sake that she should marry. In case I die, I'll have a peace. And she said, yes, okay, I'll sacrifice. She was not unopen to me. Oh, absolutely open. She said, I'll sacrifice. I said, agreed. Now she's happy. Now I don't find her any Sunday afternoon. <laughs> now they, once, <laughs> now telephone is never free. I know it. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> when I commit to something, my dear, I go with it. The best part is me in it. Normally, I don't expect that without understanding, anybody should obey anybody. And while asking certain things, I do give pros and cons and education. That's the way I use this as a tool. I know some people, I said, well, this is the best boy, grab it. She said, no, I don't want to marry. What do you want to do? I want to graduate, I want to do this, all that ivory palace. Fine, fine. Month later, well, I don't know. I found this boy and I'm in love. <clears throat> I said, okay. Let's sit on alphabetic table, find it out, pros and cons. I just tell the pros and cons, let her decide it. I just don't want later on she should say, you didn't revise me right. It's her affair, not mine. She's going to get into the gutter, it's her life, not mine. But I don't want to have the responsibility that I didn't goof.
I did goof, put myself on the line, said it what I have to say. One thing you must understand, God has done us one favor. There's a no meter on us to measure what we are doing. But one thing he did very cleverly, every action has a reaction equal and opposite. You will get it. Not today, little later. You can hide a shit under every cover you want. One day it will break up and stink. It can never be permanent. As far as I am concerned, I have never advised somebody definite. <clears throat> Except in certain cases where people are my personal ward of the state. In that situation, I am a legal authority and I feel with all my honesty and if its situation is beyond my control and my situation, I do need a help. I am very honest and we normally have a dialogue but I always win. That's the unfortunate part of it but it is true. We go through the discussion maximum. And then in certain cases, things are laid down very flat. I don't agree with you. I say, okay, I'll vouch this. And then I have to go through it. I don't think Siri Simran is married. I think I am married with both of them. And she got me by the horns. If I would have known that I would not have been that sick, I would have never, ever told her to get married. I would have sent her to college myself. I couldn't make her a doctor, but I made her doctor knee. She's married to a doctor. At least I achieve half of it. I never had the latest dream in my life that I'll marry her anytime. I wanted her to be such a perfect human being and so good. I create an example. I raised her. She's part of me. And so many others too. I stick around with everybody. Here's one example. She's the best bully fighter with me. She fights every day. But what should I do? She's born in my hands. She has different syllabus and timetable. I have different syllabus and timetable. Don't we fight? Don't we? Uh, we are perfect bullfighters. I allow her to fight, she cries, sometimes I yell, but you know, so long we have a communication, we are okay. She never tells me anything, I find it out, then I get her to attention. Sometimes she denies, sometimes she tells me. We discuss. I play my maturity role, she play her baby role, it goes on. So long there is a communication, is okay. The deadly thing is when communication stops, that is deadly. There is no good and bad, thinking make it so. But when your ego stops the com communication, then from that onward, God be with you. That's how it is. <clears throat> That's the way always it's going to be. Nobody can change it. If you don't have tools of your life with you, and one of the most powerful tools is communication, you will always end up as a fool. And whenever your romance, your projection, is more, is the more, has more priority in it than the reality, you will always fall in a ditch. 
And if you desire, 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 and you don't become deserving, you will always have a mess on hand. Desiring is not wrong, but deserving is must. That's as simple as it is. You know I'm dealing with that girl right now. She's daughter of my friend. She's what, 34, 35? She has a daughter about 10 or 12, right? 10, yeah. Right? Thank God she's alive. I have to take care of her. I took care of her three days. And mind you, they are multi, multi millionaire and this girl is worth 50, 60 million dollars herself. Can't take care of themselves. They have 40 bedroom house, they have their swimming pool, they have 160 servants, blah, blah, blah. What that matters? Nothing. She gets up, her hand shakes to catch a cup of glass. The day she came, I had to arrange a helicopter in case her eyes were so bulgy, she could have bulged out all her eyeballs. I'm going to put her in a hospital in Avakarki, case of emergency. <coughs> You talk of money, their father makes $200 million a day and he still does it. He's the biggest tycoon in the Southeast Asia. Big deal. Yesterday night on telephone he was crying in gratitude. How is she? I said, fine. She perfect. Is she? Is she? I said, yeah. There's nothing wrong. But what she's doing this for? I said, drama. She's a very good actress. She wants your attention. She's getting it. Good luck. Right now, before lunch, she was yelling and screaming at me. I started it. I provoked her. I say, I know you are mad at me, right? And she just opened her mouth. I nailed her so badly, she'll never forget it. Finally, she compromised. She said, okay, okay, I'm cooperating, I'm cooperating. I said, okay. So long you cooperate, is fine. After that, you'll be all right, fine. Then you can go do whatever you want to do. Come back again, doesn't matter. Sometime, my dear child, life becomes so complicated by us that we cannot even communicate with ourselves. That is the tragic part of life. There are three things you must remember, folks. One is a stage should not be allowed to come in, but it does come in when you cannot talk to yourself. Second stage is you cannot listen to your own self. Third stage is, you argue, debate, and reconfirm your emotional belief than your reality. Those three stages are the most dangerous stages we ever have to live in. Anything else? Huh? 
When somebody is going to hurt, just draw their attention, divert the attention, say nothing other than you must say something with which the diversion must change, attention must change. Moment you change the attention of a person, you will know they are doing wrong. They will change it. Don't start yelling and screaming. That that's the way we change the attention. That's the wrong way to do it. It's pretty simple if you do it right. Anything else? You are becoming serious. We wanted to have fun. I came here to tell you how to talk, not what to talk. You end up asking me a question, what to talk, what to do. Ask me a question, how to talk. What time we have? Quarter to five. Five or five. You have five minutes. Utilize them as best you can. How can you talk to somebody that doesn't want to listen to you? Nobody wants to listen to you to begin with. How you, you try to understand, that's a human faculty. You don't want to listen because you listen, then you have to work it out. Who wants the work? Draw their attention, draw their interest, and draw their ego. Three things. Attention, interest, and ego. Then everybody's willing to listen. If you miss all these three, forget it. That's why people, when they read their bonnies, they start... <laughs> they go. <laughs> That's why, have you seen in Gurdwara? <laughs> Have you gone to ever modern sadhana? <laughs> because nobody is interested in their self purification. Arijivan, uh, read these to them. Sit down here, I'm going to the bathroom so he can record it right. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. I have the permission to use the bathroom. Yeah. Yes, sir. Listen to this. This is about the mic. Did Did you bring his glasses, sir? Sir, by any chance? I think I can read it without it. Uh, sometimes there are trouble, tragedy, treachery, ups and downs. Can you all hear me? That won't help. Sometimes there are troubles, tragedies, treachery, ups and downs. If you don't want the pain. If you don't want it to happen to you, then one simple thing, the simplest thing, just conquer your own mind. If your mind is yours, the universe is yours. The universe is not yours, and the, the universe is not, if your mind is not yours, the universe is not yours, and in proportion. If your mind is 3%, your universe is 3%. If your mind is 70%, your universe is 70%, 100%, etc. My dears, if you don't want to have a mind, if, if you don't want, if you don't have your mind, could you tell me what you have? You have nothing. Yogi Bhajan. Oh, Yogi, let contentment be your earning, your earrings, modesty your begging bowl and wallet, and the Lord's meditation your ashes. Let the remembrance of death be your patched coat. Let, you, let your chosen path be your life of purity and faith in God as your staff. Let the highest sect be your brotherhood of all mankind and let the control of the self be your conquest of the world. Guru Nanak, that's Japji.
Question is how to win the mind. There are two simple paths. Bhakti, that's the path of devotion. Simran, that's the path of meditation or mental exercise. There's two ways to get money. Bhakti, pray for it. Simran, work for it. There's two ways to do anything in life. Bhakti, Simran. The path of devotion is to take the wor words of God and literally proceed upon it, not to use your own intellect and intelligence. That's soche, soch nahovi, je soche lakava. Means thinking, think so many times you think, and it means nothing because you can't conquer your mind that way. In the 1990s, the path of devotion is difficult. When you do it, you will, ha you will do it halfway. When you want to do your own thing. Modern living is called profit living. It has reached to such a point of insanity and insensitivity that nobody understands the will of God. That <clears throat> because you want to sell high, your fashion, dialogue, talking, projection has very little divinity. Anyone who applies their mind not to the real shall never know the reality and the peaceful enjoyment of spirituality. Pratyahar, the control of the mind through withdrawal of the senses. The joy in your life which you, re which you really want to enjoy is within you. There is nothing more precise than you within you. Not to find you within you is a curse because you have not found you within you. The day you find you within you, your mind will be yours. Continue. The alternative path is conquering the mind through deep meditation and mental exercise. That's, uh, that's uh, Simran. To understand how to develop exercises for the mind, it is essential to know we have three minds. Negative mind, positive mind, neutral mind. With a composite of 81 chambers. All of these facets of the mind are preceded through an intellectual inner intercross, intellectual intercross, and an intelligence intercross, and a conscious intercross, which registers the caliber of thought, feeling, and wishes. The mind's activity is affected and can be affected through understanding the positive, negative, and neutral minds. Characteristics of the negative mind are coping with threat, contending with accidents, registering a coincidence, relaying past memory, phases of mental projection, shadows of mental projection, deep memory of past projection, mental, mental in, in, intersection, and mental outer projection. Characteristics of the positive mind are art of memorizing creativity, art of creating creativity, art of creating art, creating art through past memory, creating art by projecting into the future, Pursuing the cycle of success, creating art through environmental effects, pursuing the cycle of artistic attributes, and pursuing the art of cohesiveness. Characteristics of the neutral mind are judging positive environment through intuition, judging environment, judging environments through senses, assessing the of assessment of success, interpretation of all facets of life, intuition, intuitive assessment of personality defects, and intuitive assessment of personality de defects that need to be covered, assessment of personality and overprojection that needs to be controlled. Try this, uh, try this practical exercise for the positive, negative, and neutral minds. Enter any, any, any situation and think negatively. Do not let the subconscious support it. Negative mind sees the danger that may be present and in any situation, it looks for... Would you like to have this as printed for you? Give it to me. It's, uh, it's beautiful. It's, uh, you need to no, read it a couple of times. it's beautiful. I to... learned it when I was almost nine years old. Hey, what is in these few papers? It is by Yogi Bahan. You know what I mean? This will tell you in and out of your mind how it works, what it does, how to deal with it, how to control it, how to use it. And that is the only power you got. Your main power is your own mind. 
If your mind is subject under anything, and if the object of your life is that not to use creativity through your mind, you will be in trouble. So why should not we get it printed, right? And give you like a handbook. Will that do? This is the minimum you have to know. Is the basic alphabet. Beat him, beat him. Beat him up. He deserves it. Yes. Professor, would you come here and talk to these American students you are from Russia? The Professor Peter is the biggest psychology known in the interview world. He has come from Moscow, to study. Please give him a hand. <laughs> Among us, there is always one teacher at one time, so be free. You must understand, though, that today I had my first classes in Kundalini Yoga, and uh, I spent eight hours practicing. <laughs> So you must uh, sympathize with him sympathize. and say he has volunteered himself. Give him a hand for that. The main point is that I am alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am open to any of your questions. I enjoyed this talk and uh, I think it's a big thing really that you have such a camp where you can discuss all these things and from what I heard I don't see that there is much difference between the problems kids have in our country and you have here. Problems with parents who are not understanding, who don't want to understand that you have grown up. They still want you to be you know like small toys you pick it up, you play with it, and you put it aside. In my understanding, children is the only purpose for which the family can, should be created. This is the only one. And I agree that it is a big responsibility. And you must understand it too. Someday you will become parents too. I think it's a great job you are doing here, and some of you are very young. It's a good thing to come here, and I, as I understand, you come regularly. We also have various camps, but these are, well, something like you have as Boy Scout camps, and this is only for sports activities and uh, other things, recreation. But we have nothing of the kind where you could listen to wise people who have life experience, good life experience, and who can teach you some simple truths. I, as a psychologist, I can tell you that uh, if you manage to carry away with you from here some 10% of what you have heard, that would be something great, you know, because you cannot have it all, you cannot memorize it. But the time comes when you will remember it. And from your subconscious, certain very simple truths that you will know, now don't understand even, and don't memorize, will spring up to your conscious. And you will say that, I remember there was a day when I heard something like this. And it's a, a very precious information. Please ask questions. No, please feel free to <laughs> ask him that question you didn't ask me. I know you have them. I don't, I don't think that there is big difference if you take middle class 
or if you take people who are living in the cities, there is a big difference uh, all over the country because the country is multi multinational. There are 120 nationalities or ethnic groups. And if you go to the Central Asia, it's the same as if you go to Iran or to Iraq or to Turkey. So, uh, but basically, I think all over the world, the problems are the same. The difference is that there are more modern society, societies and more traditional societies. That's in traditional society, the family is, uh, has the main authority. It's actually where individuals live for the family, and the family lives for the individual. But it's like in the, in the an army. There are very loving platoons in the army, you know, where there is a lot of friendship. But still it's platoon, and it's an army. And as I see the development of, of the historical process, we are going towards more and more individual autonomy. Nobody wants to take orders. And the only authority that people accept all over the world is something which, well, usually people, people call it God. And you have, you have to face this authority. And you cannot shirk this responsibility if you take upon you the right to make your own decision. Sooner or later, you will have to answer the main question. What you have did with yourself and with the life I have given to you. Even if you don't recognize any other authority. Sooner or later you will come to those spiritual questions. And speaking about the difference, the difference maybe is that for several decades, in schools and everywhere, the youth was taught that everything can be explained by material causes. That it's because we are composed of atoms and molecules and minerals and what not. And from the biological point of view, you are nothing else but a chemical formula. But there is something more to it. And this something, unfortunately, was not well analyzed and well taken into consideration. So the main difference is that there is a lot of trouble because people in the economic situation we have now uh, very often don't want to, sp to speak and to, to listen to problems about spirituality and so on. They say, first of all, we need bread. And I'm trying to explain to them that there are countries when they have a lot of bread and there are rich and unfortunate people it's very hard to understand. They say, how come? You have a car, you have a house, you have everything. You can travel. How can you be unhappy? They cannot believe it. But I saw many unhappy people here in the United States and in Europe too, who have everything material, but they don't have something which you are taught here. And I don't think that in some, there are many, uh, many classes in America and many students and many teenagers who are as unhappy as our teenagers are. I think that the, there is not, the, this is probably the main difference. As to the education, I think that both countries have to change their educational systems. The difference also maybe uh, be between our countries is that you have uh, private and public education. That you can go and pay big money and get better education. We don't have anything of this type. But it doesn't mean that we don't have class differences and differentiation. You know there is a very good saying that uh, all animals are equal, but some of them are more equal. It's from the famous animal farm, and it's being applied to, to the countries which are very proud of their equal rights. Some of the people are more equal, and some of them are sending their children abroad to the best colleges and universities. I mean, some people in our country. 
But uh, I want also to say that, as I see it, we're all converging. We are all transforming, all of us, all the human race is transforming into one big country. I don't hope that I'll live up to the moment when there will be no borders and no visas. But I think that maybe you will see it. And you, you will have to be ready for one simple fact, that human beings are everywhere the same, have the same basic foundations, which is spirituality, moral and ethic. I envy you. Any other questions? Why are you so, why are you so shy? You know, I have, I taught several classes here, and when I was, once I was so attacked by, attacked I mean in a positive sense, they bombarded me with questions of all types. I, I must... Say I, no too much, doctor. I arrive at, yeah, this is what I wanted to say, that I arrive at the conclusion, or either you know everything already. Yeah, they are, they are finding one difficulty, answer <laughs> my question. They know everything, but they, they are having a difficulty, fight, how to implement it. Well, in my they opinion... They are not normal kids. They have been raised with a lot of wisdom, love and affection, but they do not know how, how to walk about. That's the main question. Isn't that a question? Yes or no? Well, I think that the answer you know, too, to practice. <laughs> to learn from your experience. Any knowledge taken from anywhere, from books or from living word, it's just one more piece of information. You have to, do, to go and to apply it and find out for yourself. You have a different personality profile. What is good for some, someone may not be good for you, or not good to the extent, to the degree that it is good for the other person. Just go and apply. Leave it. One more simple truth, which you know too. May I ask you one question? Yeah, do, now it is there too. Do any of you have uh, uh, Eastern European origin? Maybe some grandparents from Russia or from Europe? Raise your hands, please. Ah. He asked any Eastern European backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah, they are alive. I meet very often people who have some background from Russia or other East European countries. Some of them may have Russian background too. Yeah. Grandparent at least. Isn't it? Red How shirt, many of you have uh, one way or the other Russian background? That's pretty yeah. good. Four kids. Well, that's it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have tea. Yeah. Have one. Come on, you elders. Oh, there is an invitation. Gurjot Kaur at her trailer have a ice cream, cookies, and everything at a party. On behalf of Gurjot Singh and Kaur, you are all cordially invited. And this way is the way. And if you get out of the ranch anyway, you can't re enter. This is the way. Hey, you don't want to goof on ice cream?